classification summary. Characteristics of life. It is hard to define what life is, and there are many different opinions that are discussed and revised. However, here is a representative sample of what traits are required to be alive. Organization slash order, adaptations, response to the environment, regulation, energy processing, growth and development, and reproduction. All life is organized into fundamental units called cells. Populations of organisms that are alive today have adapted to changing environments. Living organisms must be able to recognize their surroundings and respond to them. Living organisms must be able to regulate their internal conditions. This is called maintaining homeostasis. All living things require energy to carry out the function of life. They must be able to obtain energy and process it to be used in their biological functions. Eukaryotic organisms are born from parents, forming a new generation and eventually growing and developing into a mature form. Living things must be able to pass on their traits to future generations of organisms. This creation of offspring can be asexual, single organisms reproducing on their own, or sexual, requiring the mixing of genetic material. Viruses. Viruses do not follow all the characteristics of life and are considered by most scientists to be non-living. However, many microbiologists present arguments that viruses are alive. They are composed of a protein coat or capsid and a core which contains either DNA or RNA as their genetic material. Viruses need a host to replicate. As you can see in the image, viruses can be many shapes and are much smaller than bacteria. Classification. Organisms that are considered living are classified. Classification is a method of organizing species into groups called taxa. There are eight taxa in the modern system of classification. You can see it at the right. So we have life, domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. The modern system began with the work of Carolus Linnaeus in 1735. Linnaeus based his classification of species solely on shared characteristics. Scientists have refined this system using molecular homologies and DNA evidence. Domains. In a phylogenetic tree of all life on Earth, the first branches represent the three domains of modern classification system, bacteria, archaea, and eukarya or eukaryota. The next level of classification underneath domains are kingdoms. So let's look at the major differences between the kingdoms. First, the corresponding kingdom to the domain bacteria is eubacteria. You can see the organization, unicellular and prokaryotic, asexual reproduction, containing cell walls with peptidoglycans, no nuclear envelope, no membrane-bound organelles, and they can be autotroph or heterotroph. The next kingdom, archaebacteria, which is the kingdom underneath the domain archaea, unicellular and prokaryotic, asexual reproduction. Yes, they have cell wall, but without peptidoglycans, no nuclear envelope or membrane-bound organelles, and they are autotroph or heterotroph. Protista, which is the first kingdom underneath the domain eukarya or eukaryota, mostly unicellular, some multicellular, eukaryotic, asexual reproduction, 
sometimes a cell wall with cellulose. Yes, a nuclear envelope and membrane-bound organelles and autotroph or heterotroph. And then here are the major differences between the remaining three kingdoms in the domain Eukaryota. Fungi, plantae, and animalia. For the most part, they're multicellular. Some fungi are unicellular and all are eukaryotic. All of these kingdoms can reproduce asexually. Plantae and animalia also reproduce sexually. Animalia have no cell wall. Plantae have cell wall containing cellulose. Fungi have cell wall containing chitin. All have a nuclear envelope and membrane-bound organelles as you would expect in a eukaryotic cell. Fungi and animalia are heterotrophs, while plantae are autotrophs, receiving their energy from the sun. Kingdom Eubacteria. Domain bacteria, so here's that first domain, remember there are three. So domain bacteria consists of prokaryotes and includes the bacteria most people are familiar with, including both the beneficial bacteria used to make yogurt, as well as disease-causing organisms such as E. coli. Domain bacteria has only one kingdom, eubacteria. Species in this kingdom are assigned to more discrete taxa based on their cell structures, methods of cellular metabolism, and other factors. Kingdom Archaebacteria. Domain Archaea, here, also contains only prokaryotes. These prokaryotes share characteristics with both bacteria and eukaryotes. They differ from bacteria in their rRNA gene sequence and in their plasma membrane sequence. Domain archaea includes organisms that can live in places considered too volatile for other organisms, such as very hot or salty environments. They also live in fresh water, soil, and in people. Domain eukarya. Domain eukarya is made up of eukaryotes. They can be unicellular or multicellular. The cells all have a membrane-bound nucleus and various organelles. The domains include protista, fungi, plantae, and animalia. Kingdom protista. Kingdom protista is so diverse that some taxonomists believe it could be subdivided into many kingdoms. Any organism that is difficult to classify will be assigned to Kingdom Protista. Like all eukaryotes, protist cells have a true nucleus and internal membranes. Protists may resemble fungi, animals, plants, or have some combination of the traits from the five other kingdoms. They may be unicellular, colonial, or multicellular. They may be autotrophic or heterotrophic. The most elaborate cells on Earth are unicellular protists. You can see in the image this artistic rendition of the tree of life, including the diversity here of protists. Kingdom fungi. Fungi are eukaryotic and nearly all fungi are multicellular. They have cell walls that contain chitin, while plants have cellulose. Fungi are heterotrophs. They cannot make their own food as they lack chloroplasts. Species in this kingdom are assigned to phyla based on their sexual reproductive structures. You can see the mushroom or the fungi in the image is psilocybe azurescens, which is a mushroom with hallucinogenic properties. Kingdom plantae. Plants are multicellular photosynthetic eukaryotes. Members of the plantae kingdom are further grouped based on how they carry water, vascular and nonvascular. There are three nonvascular phyla and nine vascular phyla. Plants are very diverse in their structure. Kingdom Animalia. 
Animals are eukaryotic multicellular heterotrophs. There are 36 recognized animal phyla, of which nine contain the vast majority of described existing species. Animals are grouped into phyla based on the presence or absence of certain structures. Chimpanzees are one of humans' closest relatives. Phyla of the Animal Kingdom The animal kingdom consists of 36 phyla based on body symmetry, tissue layers, and developmental patterns. Some of the phyla, which you can see in the image here, include sponges, jellyfish, flatworms, roundworms, mollusks, segmented worms, arthropods, echinoderms, and chordates. There are some specific characteristics seen in the major animal phyla. So you can see things that separate this single-celled ancestor. Then we get multicellularity, which all of these phyla contain, right? And then we're further separated at this point based on tissues and three germ layers and so on. And pseudocelum versus coelom, which we're going to talk about in just a minute here. So as the development gets further and further specified, we can separate from these common ancestors into our different animal phyla. Symmetry. Animal bodies either have radial symmetry or bilateral symmetry. Radial symmetry, which you see right here and here, is a common feature of simple animals. Radially symmetrical animals have all body parts radiating out from the center body, center of the body. Bilateral symmetry, which you see indicated here, is more commonly found in complex animals. Bilateral animals show a right and left side. Body cavities. Animals with three tissue layers, triploblasts, can be further subdivided based on whether their mesoderm develops an internal body cavity. A body cavity is a fluid-filled space within an organism. In animals, the main body cavity is called the coelom. Triploblasts can be classified into three categories based on the presence or type of body cavity. Acelomates have no body cavity. Pseudocelomates have a partially lined body cavity. And coelomates have a fully lined body cavity. All right, so let's look at some images here of the different types of body cavities. So the coelom is the lined cavity between the gut and the outer body wall. So we have in a triploblast, we have these three layers, the outer ectoderm, the mesoderm, and then the endoderm, which is the red or reddish orange, okay? In acelomates, which you see on the left, this is a flatworm, an acelomate, there's no body cavity at all, okay? There's just this digestive cavity. There's no body cavity. There's no fluid-filled cavity at all. In coelomates, which this annelid is an example of, they have this body cavity called the coelom, which you can see here. Um, and it has complete lining. So we have complete lining of this body cavity. And the, the lining is derived from the mesoderm, this, this layer right outside of it, okay? And what that complete lining does in this type of body cavity is allows organs to be attached to each other so they can be suspended in a particular order while they can still move freely within the cavity. So most bilateral animals, including vertebrates like humans and like this annelid shown, 
are coelomates. Now, in between an acelomate and a coelomate is what's known as a pseudocelomate, which just literally means false cavity. And so we just have a fluid-filled body cavity. So we just have this body cavity here that's just fully filled with fluid. And so we can derive tissue from the mesoderm here that lines the fluid-filled body cavity. So it's not quite like an acelomate where there's no fluid cavity. There is some, but um, it's not as well organized. So if we have tissues and organs here, they're not held in place and as organized as they are in a coelomate. Modes of reproduction. Animals can reproduce both asexually and sexually. Asexual reproduction in animals includes budding, regeneration, fragmentation, and parthenogenesis. Sexual reproduction in animals is the combination of sperm and egg from two parents. This includes external fertilization, where sperm and egg meet outside female body, and internal fertilization, where sperm and egg meet inside female body. Oviparity is laying eggs which are nourished by the yolk. Ovoviviparity is where the eggs stay in the female body, are nourished by yolk, and are laid right before they hatch. And viviparity are live births when offspring are in the womb and they are nourished by the mother. Thermoregulation. Animals regulate how they exchange heat with their environment. Different types of animals have different ways of regulating body heat. Animals fit in to one of two categories. Ectotherms are what are known as cold-blooded animals. Most of their heat escapes into the environment, so their body temperature is close to that of their surroundings. Endotherms are the warm-blooded animals, such as mammals and birds. These animals have evolved homeostatic mechanisms that allow them to use the heat they generate.